<coughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the member who had to refer to a committee. A two-part question for you. May the vote on a motion to refer to a committee be reconsidered? Yes, as long as the committee has not met. And the second part will be, if a member of a committee resigns before the committee work, before the committee has completed its work, how is the vacancy filled? The vacancy is then filled by the appointing member. Thank you. The member will postpone indefinitely. Yes, sir. Again, two parts. If a main motion and a pending motion to postpone indefinitely are referred to a committee, what will be the immediately pending question when the committee reports? Explain your answer. When the committee reports, the immediately pending question will be the main motion. Because whenever it's referred to the committee, postpone indefinitely is dropped from consideration. May the vote on a motion to postpone indefinitely be reconsidered? Yes, it can, in the affirmative only. Thank you. To the member who had objected to consideration of the question, to what may an objection to the consideration of the question be applied? Object to the consideration can only be applied to the main motions and petitions or communications not from a superior body. Okay, second part. If an objection to the consideration of the question is sustained, when, if ever, may the same main motion come before the assembly again? The same main motion become a, before, may come before the assembly again at the next session, but no, not during the same session. Thank you. To the member who was assigned, excuse me, assigned point of order. Yes. Under what circumstances may a point of order be raised at a time later than when the breach occurs? It has to be raised immediately after the breach has occurred. However, if there hasn't been, if there hasn't been substantial business or voting, it might still be applicable in that situation, but it's supposed to happen at the time of the breach. Thank you. The member would reconsider. Again, two parts. Is the motion to reconsider debatable? And explain your answer. The motion to reconsider is not debatable. However, the motion that you are reconsidering may be debatable if it is an debatable motion. And secondly, who is permitted to make the motion to reconsider? Any member that was um, voted on the prevailing side can make the motion to reconsider. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. If a member obtains a floor while a main motion is pending and moves to reconsider the vote on a previously adopted main motion, how should the chair respond? Sir, can I please have you repeat the question? You bet. If a member obtains the floor while a main motion is pending and moves to reconsider the vote on a previously adopted main motion, how should the chair respond? The chair should allow him to make the motion as long as he's in order and have been given rights to talk. However, the, because of the motion to reconsider takes precedence over the actual considering of the motion to reconsider. So he could allow him to do it and then they would um, mark it down in the minutes or take notes of it. That way they can take it up when no business is pending. Okay, next question. If the pre-established time for special order has arrived and the chair believes the assembly would prefer to continue debating the pending question, what vote is required to permit the assembly to continue debating the pending question instead of moving to the special order? It would take a two-thirds vote and there's three different ways to do that. You can have two-thirds against the order of the day. You can take a two-thirds vote to suspend the rules and continue debate on the current motion. And then you could take a two-thirds vote to um, li extend limits of debate and continue the current motion. Thank you. Okay, we will now proceed to the clarification round. Although we may direct a question to an individual, this is a team activity, and anybody can answer, anybody can help, anybody can add to, anybody can clarify. So, uh, Madam Secretary, I'll start with you. Uh, we had a motion to reconsider on the floor yes, here. Yes, And you spoke in uh, favor of reconsidering it. Yes. Uh, nobody else spoke against that, and yet it was defeated on a one to four vote. Uh, please clarify the chapter's position. 
I believe that the other members of the assembly thought that they did not need to discuss the motion. However, they might have conflicting views since I was the member who debated it. And the disposition is that the chapter didn't want to reconsider the motion. Thank you. Sir, there was a motion to postpone indefinitely on the floor. That was your motion, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And after a few brief moments of debate, you, you withdrew the motion. Yes. But you sought someone's permission to do that. Was it not yours to withdraw? No, sir. Uh, the chair had restated it, and therefore it was, it was the uh, assembly's motion or property of the assembly, so I had to request permission to withdraw. Mr. Chairman, what did you, how did you put the question? Um, when he withdrew, I asked for objections, and when I didn't have any, I let him withdraw the motion. What would have been the vote had there been an objection? A majority vote. A majority vote to? To let him to, allow yes. to withdraw or not to withdraw. Okay, thank you. Today you uh, referred the motion to a committee. What kind of committee was that referred to? That was referred to the Premier Leadership Committee, which is listed in our bylaws under a separate heading. And it's, it's a, a standing, standing committee. committee. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I want to follow up on that then, as long as we're there. So the blanket, the, the, the motion was, the simple motion, refer the main motion to the Premier Leadership Committee. Is that, is that correct? Yes. yes, sir. Well, what would have been the scope of the committee's authority in the absence of any instructions in the motion? It's a standing committee, and listed in our bylaws are the authority that the standing committee gets. Because it's one of the more used committees, we let it have more power listed in our bylaws because it gets a lot of motions referred to it. So that's a bylaws level authorization? Yes, yes sir. sir. And that committee actually has the power to spend money and take action for our society. Okay, thank you. So you made an amendment to invite a speaker. Yes. So uh, who gets to decide who that speaker is and uh, the process to obtain the speaker? We had actually decided that we would ask Brandon Bumgarden in our debates. He was a past state Oklahoma FFA president, and we decided the way to pay him would be his $40 an hour that he charges. And if our funds were running low, it wouldn't be a problem for some of the people in our community who support us strongly to help us afford this. We have lots of sponsorships. So is that the way you, you did you invite a speaker or a uh, specific individual? We just, uh, the amendment was to invite a guest speaker, so she wasn't sure who, who we wanted to invite, so that's why she did it pretty, uh, 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 vaguely. vaguely, yes, so that way that we could choose by debate. So we debate. did invite a speaker or a specific individual? We can still invite any speaker, as the amendment states, because we didn't have a uh, we didn't have a recess or anything so that we could call Brandon Bumgarten and see if he'd be able to come. So we did leave it open for any guest speaker at this time. And the motion to amend didn't state which speaker, so it's still left open. In the end, we never chose a guest speaker to invite. Thank you. Madam Secretary, you began by saying you voted on the prevailing side when you made the motion to reconsider. Yes. Why was that necessary? The motion, the saying that you are on the prevailing side is necessary when you're reconsidering a motion because to reconsider a motion, you have to vote on the prevailing side. Is if really? I had not voted on the prevailing side, I would not be able to make the motion to reconsider. And that's to prevent the dilatory use of the motion to reconsider from the people who didn't weren't on the prevailing side. That way they yeah. could use it and try to get a motion back before it went. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.